as Africa continues to play catch up with the rest of the world in economic growth, uh, boosting export potential through products and commodities uh, has a cooperative advantage and has been identified as a way out. And ahead of COP28, the African continent is gearing up for another round of negotiations. And part of that process emerged at the recent Africa Climate Summit in Abuja, Nigeria. And these are the main focus of this episode of Africa Weekly. I am Charles Alpha, welcoming you to the program. <music> Now, a climate forum comprising of critical stakeholders in the climate space and energy sectors in Africa was held in Abuja, Nigeria, and it was uh, to deliberate on a broad roadmap towards achieving a greener future through a robust financing of the energy transition plans of governments in the continent. <music> Joining me now to talk more on the last uh, Climate African Forum that ended here in Abuja is Dr. Uh, George Mwagu. He's a convener of that event and also the Director General's Global Center for Law, Business and Economy. I want to say thank you very much, Doctor, for talking to us on Africa Weekly. Thank you, Charles. Thanks for having me. Right. Now, I want to begin by asking you this. Uh, the Africa Climate Forum, what exactly you know, was that forum all about? Uh, thank you. Um, it was about bringing Africa together, bringing together the members of the public sector, the private sector, academia, and business people together under an umbrella to discuss um, the issues, the opportunities, the issues, the opportunities, and the risks around energy transition in Africa. So we, we thought that it was important. Um, you would have noticed that a few weeks or, or nearly a month before that we convened that forum, there had been a summit, an African climate summit in Kenya. But that was driven mostly by government. And you know some resolutions were reached at that forum, that Nairobi forum. And we thought that we need to bring it, it, this transition is going to be driven by the private sector and the business people you know government will set the rules but by and large the operationalizing the transition will be by uh, the private sector so it was important to bring all the stakeholders under an umbrella and as we prepare for cop 28 in dubai next month it was also important that africa is able to articulate um, it, you know, its position and that we do not continue to rely on what is being sent down to us, that we, we actually provide Africa solutions to Africa problems. Okay, so now if, if you look at the Nigerian energy transition you know, plan and what government is doing to drive it, would you say Enough is being done as Nigeria journeys towards the net zero target uh, before 2030. Yeah, um, you, you know, the en energy transition plan itself should be looked at beyond an energy policy. It's beyond an energy policy. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an ambitious economic blueprint, actually. Um, it speaks to a number of things. Uh, pulling out 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. It talks about bringing more energy services to people. It talks about, you know, it recognizes the fact that there'll be job losses in the um, fossil fuel industries and how to manage those job losses. It recognizes that uh, to energy access for Africans, for Nigerians important and that we need to make sure we continue to use gas 
as a transitionary fuel that's, uh, as we transition to renewable energy sources. He also talks about streamlining you know, the different sectors because it, it also recognizes that there's a bit of policy inconsistency around renewable energy sources that tries to deal with those things. So yes, it, it, so if you look at it, you'll see that it's a very loaded document and very ambitious document and very, very important, and people should pay attention. And so government has gone further to, to do this. It's, it's gone further to pass the Climate Act, uh, setting up the NCCC to drive uh, that, and it's, it's laid out some policies. But you, if you look closely, you'll see that it's not just the policies. It, it's going to cost a fortune to achieve the mandate of, of what we want to achieve with that energy transition uh, document. I have not identified those risks and all of that. You know, for a uh, conference or uh, events such as that, at the end of it all, they would have come up with a, a certain, you know, uh, a conclusion what they want to do, an agenda, you know, uh, set for this conference that ended. What were the resolutions? Uh, what uh, have been the resolve, you know, to tackle some of these areas you have identified? Thank you, uh, Charles. Uh, the conference was a resounding success, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the objectives we had set before the, the, the forum took place. One important thing was, you know, realizing that uh, Africa needed to do its part, contribute its quota to the world by reducing uh, its as greenhouse emission targets, you know, meeting its targets. Africa needed to do that. But we also resolved that it was, in doing that, we had to do it in a responsible manner and not, and realize that, you know, the resources, what resources, what capabilities do we have? Uh, how are we going to do it using the resources and capabilities we have? Uh, you know, we, it was, it was re resolved that as much as possible, we should look at using gas as much as possible because gas enables us transition better in a fairer manner. It, it was also agreed that Africa should have uh, a uniform voice as a block uh, at future meets, starting from the COP28 in Dubai next month, that Africa should go as, as with one voice because our, uh, we, we have the same socioeconomic conditions across most of the countries in Africa. Oh. And we should, be, uh, um, we should not just be demanding uh, concessionary financing, but we should be more strategic in what we're going to use those fundings for. And, and one of the, the, those things was the need to use those concessionary financing to catalyze further private sector investment in, in, in the area. Uh, and finally, we, we also we, we put together uh, these resolutions into a document. We share it across the uh, rest of Africa. We will present it at COP28. And we will, as, uh, the, as one of the positions of, of Africa towards the uh, um, energy transition landscape. All right, thank you very much, Dr. George Wago. We want to say thank you for finding time to shed more light on this topic on Africa Weekly. Thanks for coming. And that's our package this week. Thanks for watching. I am Charles Alpha. See you next week. Thank you.